Tip number one. So wash your whisk on your drill after every mix. Especially with skim. The skim will set quicker than salt and cement. But it's as handy to give it a wee rinse after every mix and a bit of a scrub. Quick spin and good as new. Otherwise you're going to end up with a big mess on your drill which will take you time to get it clean and a clean drill is a happy drill. Tip number two. Clean your tools up guys after coating and trailing up. Just make sure that you have a clean bucket of water ready to wash up your tools and the importance of this is that the tools are ready to go again for the next trial, the next coat um, or the next wall or sealant. Tip number three. You may be at a job where there is no outside water tap. So if you place a trial along, turn the water on and you'll just bridge the gap. And as you see, you'll be filling up your buckets of water in no time. Simple wee trick. Also works with some cut up, up bottles as well. Tip number four. A wee quick way to know whether or not you need to raise up and down your stilts. Very simple. Just uh, place them up above your head. Push them to touch the ceiling. And you can quickly check the gap and you'll know whether you have to raise them up or drop them back down a couple of holes. Jump into tip number five, but first answer me this. Is that an outside corner or an inside corner? Tip number five. Always clean your board after use. This, as you can see, will make it easier to store, move about, and of course, a clean board will be ready to cut up your fruit in your lunch. But in all serious, a clean board will be ready, save you time, and you can get your, your mix up a lot quicker, and it'll keep your mix free from any wee lumps of old, dirty plaster. Clean your board. Do, 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 do. Tip number six. Make sure and wash the bucket out after every mix. And what that will do is give you a clean bucket for your next mix. It will also help the stuff not set with a clean bucket. And the stuff should just set naturally. Dirty buckets and stuff could set quicker. It will also keep the plaster happy as there won't be any contamination in the mix. Such as small stones and grit. Tip number seven. Damaged or bent trowel, unfixable, unrepairable, and do what I did and cut it up for a midget trowel. And if not, don't throw it away anyway. Always use it as a scraping trowel. Tip number eight. Understanding the suction of the background before you plaster. So obviously there's low and high suction. So it's just really try to understand what you're going to plaster over before you just go ahead and start. And that will help you choose what kind of primer and PVA, etc. Whatever adhesive you're going to use to prep her your background. Tip number nine. Always add powder to the water when mixing plaster. And the reason you do it this way is so that it doesn't create big lumps and big dry lumps at the bottom of the bucket. And you'll get a nice consistent mix adding powder to the water. Tip number 10. This tip guys is for when you're doing ceilings or work that's sort of above your head. And it's to keep your trowel with a load of stuff on it away from directly above your head. 
And what this will do is it'll stop it dripping on your head and most importantly, it'll stop it getting into your eyes. You could also wear safety glasses to help prevent this happening. Tip number 11. Always scrape down your wall before you plaster. And what this tip will do guys is it will stop anything loose coming off into your wet plaster and later on moving and causing scratches and it will also remove any drips that could be there from the ceiling and other walls or mixing which will also hinder your coating as you do know skim coats only a couple of mil thick um, also scrape it down before you even prime the wall and PVA. If you haven't already, make sure and subscribe for more hints and tips and other videos, including tools, how tos um, and much more. And also make sure and hit the wee bell to be notified on all the the upcoming videos as well. Tip number twelve. Similar to tip 11, this is scraping down your beads. Um, don't use a good skimming shell, I'm using this just for the purpose of the demo. Um, but this is very important if you've planted the beads on in plaster to make sure it's clean and tidy. And this will help the finish of the job look real sharp and clean so that you're not plastering over any lumps and it will keep your edges looking straight and square. Have I missed any hints or tips, guys? Is there any that you would have added to the video yourselves? Um, anything you think I've left out? Let me know down in the comments. Such as this little tip here that just didn't quite make it, but it is important. You can always put your electrical cables inside the box and it'll help you get an, an easier finish instead of working around the wires and will also help to clean out the socket nice and tidy. Let me know in the comments and I'll possibly make a video on the tips also.